What's up guys, it's Ray, welcome to Age of Feminist, and I'm here with this month's Patreon-sponsored movie review. And the movie we'll be talking about is the 2018 anime film Godzilla, The Planet Eater. Once again, directed by Shizuno Kobun and Seshita Hiroyuki. And this is the third uh, installment in the Godzilla anime trilogy. It started with Godzilla, uh, Planet of Monsters, continued with Godzilla, City on the Edge of Battle, and then concluded with this, Godzilla, The Planet Eater. And I have to admit, when I, I watched the first movie in the theater when it first came out, and I genuinely enjoyed it. I, I it was one of my, I'd say one of my favorite films of 2017, mainly because it kind of surprised me. It was, uh, you know, it was a Godzilla movie, but it took many different spins on it. It was a more sci-fi anime type of feeling. And, you know, I thought it was cool. You know, the presentation was fun. The animation, though, being cell shaded I thought was impressive. But then I watched the second movie, and, you know, it was more or less the same thing as far as the patterns, uh, the pattern, the, pro the progression of the story were concerned. And, you know, because of that, I was, I was greatly disappointed with the second movie. So going into the third movie, which I watched in the theaters, mind you, I kind of didn't have a lot of hope or high expectations. I kind of expected more or less the same kind of progression, uh, that the first two movies had. So I wasn't 100% sure if The Planet Eater would, was going to be worth the money I was going to be giving it. So The Planet Eater takes place moments after the end of the second movie, The City on the Edge of Battle, and Haruo and his allies who survived the attack, Godzilla's attack on Mechagodzilla City, they're kind of regrouping to figure out what to do. Many of them are falling into despair. And all the while, Godzilla seems to be in another state of slumber. And so we have Metaphias, who is uh, Haruo's uh, closest friend, at least closest ally, and uh, you know he's he's part of this alien race called the Exif, and they're kind of like this elfish priest-like race. And while everyone's falling into despair, they they take this opportunity to recruit many followers into the religion. But this is when the Exif strike. They call forth Ghidorah, who is the the destroyer of planets, the bringer of death. And Ghidorah aims to bring destruction to everyone and everything in his way, and that includes not only planet Earth but also Godzilla himself. So when they announced that Ghidorah was going to be a part of the third movie. You know, they, they dropped hints of it in the second movie um, by dropping down by dropping his name. But I still couldn't bring myself to be excited because they name dropped Mechagodzilla uh, before the release of the second movie, and I got so pumped for that. However, I was greatly disappointed with the way Mechagodzilla was presented in the second movie. I thought it was interesting and different, but I thought the overall execution wasn't satisfying. So. Uh, you know, when they announced Ghidorah at first, I'm like, you know, okay, you know, I hope they don't remix him too much because you know they're going to remix him. I actually look forward to the way they would remix him, but I just hope that he would still be enjoyable in whatever presentation they decide to, uh, they decide to make. And, you know, and when they first released the, the posters of uh, The Planet Eater, I started to gain more confidence in the movie. They actually show Ghidra uh, in his three with his three heads taking down Godzilla. So I was like, okay, this has got to be this has got to be good in a way. And that being said, with the positives of the Planet Eater, I thought the story was a positive. I think out of all three movies, this story had the best balance of uh, action, of drama, you know, legit emotionally gripping drama and uh, Godzilla battles. And the story, it was streamlined, so that way it didn't overcomplicate itself. You know, I thought it was interesting in the first two movies, but you know, this one, they had still had a little bit left over, but it wasn't too much. You know, you had themes of religion, uh, and uh, more more themes of religion here than themes of philosophy, but it didn't overpower or overcomplicate the story too much. It actually blended well together with what the movie was trying to deliver. And another thing I thought that was interesting is that in this movie, they decided to focus on the Exif this time around. You know, I didn't notice it at first, but you know, the first movie you focus a lot more on the humans and their story, their culture. In the second movie, we get to know more of the Bilisaldo, who are kind of like the the alien race that's more uh, more in touch with technology. They believe the only way to take down Godzilla is by integrating themselves with technology. And here we get the Xif, who are kind of like I mentioned earlier, this almost priest-like spiritual religious race. And I like the way the trilogy as a whole decided to do this because it didn't put any of the races in the background. It gave each race their own time to shine. And because the Xif had the spotlight in the third movie, we get to know a lot more about Metaphias. I thought that, um, you know, in the first two movies, he was he was Haruo's closest ally, but he was more of like in the background, kind of being mis ha having this mysterious aura. You don't know much about him, but he, the way he spoke, it spoke like he knew a lot more than uh, what he was putting off at first. And you know, he knew you knew just the way 
anime archetypes work themselves out you know that he was he had some kind of secret that he wasn't going to bring out until the very end and that was definitely the case in this movie we also get to see the twins the, the twins of the Hotuo tribe Maina and Miana have uh, even more central parts because uh, at the end of the second movie, uh, what's her name? Yuko, who was Haruo's, uh, who was the lead female under Haruo. And, you know, she gets put into a comatose state after nearly being 100% integrated with the machinery they were using to take down Godzilla. Um, so she, she has a very little to nothing to do with the plot of the third movie so we get to bring we get to bring in the, bring in the twins as the central females of the third movie story and you know it was, it was nice to finally see them with even more to do with the plot and there's even a cameo by a character who a veteran character who every Godzilla fan knows and that character I'm not gonna name drop you just have to watch the movie for yourself and I also dug Ghidorah's design you know he's not King Ghidorah here I keep wanting to say King Ghidorah but he's just Ghidorah in this story and what I dug about his design he looked more alien-like he had you know, if you look closely at his face each head had uh, more than two eyes and above all he's ridiculously large you know, you take you take Godzilla this is already the biggest Godzilla we have ever have represented in any media but then Gitter is just beyond that his you know he's almost all neck oh or rather we get to see mostly his neck and, and you know just the scale of it all he's ridiculously large he's almost entirely made up of energy and I thought the, they did enough remixing to Ghidorah to the point where he doesn't stray too far off from his original concept but at the same time make him different enough so that way you get something new to look forward to and of course the build up and eventually reveal of Ghidorah when he finally comes out it was epic and especially when the moment when uh, he finally appears in front of Godzilla it was goosebumps, you know, I legit got goosebumps. It was one of my favorite moments of the story. And something, you know, I'll just briefly mention because I also mentioned them in my reviews for the previous two movies. I dug the animation despite it being uh, cell shaded. I thought, you know, it was still enjoyable and top quality and I enjoyed the voice acting for the most part. And for the minuses, you know, I think the biggest minus for me was the final battle between Godzilla and Ghidorah. I mean, the buildup was great. The reveal was excellent. The first few moments of the battle, awesome. However, they don't really move much beyond where they initially meet. They kind of just stay in the same place. You know, I, I wanted them to just, I wanted Ghidorah to throw Godzilla as humongous as he is, just around and destroy whole mountains and whatnot and just wreck a whole lot more havoc. You know, you get a lot of destruction, don't get me wrong, but uh, because they don't really move much and I, I felt like overall not a whole lot of things happen between the two, the two kaiju. And then, you know, I just learned relatively recently from reading and watching other reviews that this was mostly done due to budgetary constraints. And you know, thinking about that, I thought the choices that they made uh, due to the budgetary restraints were okay you know I still would have loved to see a lot more movement a lot more things uh, happening in the final fight altogether and you know, with all honesty I thought the final confrontation between Haro and Metaphias was a lot more entertaining you know actually you know going back I want to actually put the final confrontation between Haro and Metaphias in the positives because I thought that held a lot held as much entertainment value than uh, than the final Godzilla fight if not more. And not only in the final battle, but throughout the movie, there are plenty of moments that could have been cut or that could have been sped up to get rid of a lot of dead weight. And Godzilla's screen time, this movie could have definitely used a lot more. Though I felt like this movie had the most Godzilla when comparing against the, the other two Godzilla anime movies. And I'm not going to say explicitly who, but I thought the relationship between Haro and, and one of the characters he eventually gets close to in this movie uh, was just really quick and really fast. And I felt like when it got to the point where it did, it just I didn't feel like it had the right amount of progression and buildup leading up to it. I would have loved to see a lot more buildup. And I won't name explicitly why because of spoilers, but I do have mixed feelings on the ending itself and the way everything played out. But overall, what do I have to say about Godzilla the Planet Eater? You know, out of all three anime Godzilla movies, I thought it was definitely the best one. And just mainly because of what everything I said in the beginning, it had a, the best balance of story, of drama, and action. And also we finally get an animated kaiju confrontation. Granted, I would have loved to see more from that. I would have, seen, would have loved to see a lot more animation uh, being presented in the final confrontation. But we do get a kaiju confrontation. We didn't get any of it in the first movie. We kind of had it in another kind of interpretation in the second movie, but we definitely got it here. But you know, overall I'd say it was a satisfying experience 
And if you were to ask me, would I love for this story to continue in further installments? Uh, I would definitely say yes, mainly because I would love to see how they would take classic Godzilla kaiju and remix them the way they did uh, Ghidorah and Mechagodzilla. And then this movie is going to follow the same pattern as the first two movies. Uh, Netflix is going to have exclusive international rights to stream it, so I'm pretty sure it'll pop on Netflix in the next few months. But yes, those are my thoughts on Godzilla the Planet Eater. Please leave your comments and your question in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. And if you dig my content, you can always support Asian Films via Patreon from as little as one dollar much like much like the good folks who made uh, the viewing of the planet eater possible all right thanks again guys and hope to see you all again in the next video take it easy